What's up, everybody? We have approximately 10-ish minutes here with Mr. Ryan Muckenhern across the table from Mark and Jimmy, and we are going to talk today about a cartridge that's been requested from us for, gosh, I don't even know. I mean, since basically we started doing some cartridge talks, and apologies to those of you who've been requesting it for so long and we just haven't done it yet, but hey, now we're finally getting to it. we got a big list of stuff to get through, but uh, today's is the 35 Whalen, or... Quillen, or I don't know, however you're going to say it. Sounds like it might even be debated, possibly. Yes. Okay. Whalen. Whalen. So you're. We're just going to go forward with guy. today's podcast saying Whalen. Um, Ryan, tell us about what it is, where it came from, why it exists, all that good stuff. Commercialized Wildcat, which is really fun. Oh, man. Feels good. Now mm, that we've done a Wildcat, you feel it feels good to watch somebody else yeah. succeed. Long, you just are like, wow. You kind of know what goes in. You're like, wow, you did it. You long, did it, everybody. <laughs> Very long period of time between its inception and its adoption. I want to say like 66 years, but it was like a cult classic for a long time. Somebody fact checked me on that. I actually don't know when that cartridge received its um, true commercialization. Do you know that I can't hear the number 66 and not think of the movie The Great Outdoors? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, six times. No, 66. It's a good movie. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Great movie. So what you do is um, you get a super adept gunsmith um, and you take a 30 out 6 case and you put a 358 diameter bullet in it. So we're going to go from like a 180 grain bullet to like a 250 grain bullet yeah. in the same case. Um, and you're really not going to give up a whole heck of a lot in velocity and there's a really cool reason for that. But you you turn the pretty humble 30 out 6 cartridge into a rather formidable medium game cartridge. Um, I don't think it's uh, 375 H&H, but it's really not oh. far off. Okay. Like, if we really examine the numbers and if we look at some other cartridges very close to it in the, um, you know, the cartridge uh, world, like 9.3 by 62, which is a European cartridge that in a lot of countries is considered adequate for shooting dangerous game, um, it's it's like right there. They're, they're almost the same thing. Uh, very close. 9.3 by 62 is like a 286 grain bullet. Um, 35 Whalen's like a 250, 225, 250. So was this there. was this made to take on some specific quarry, or I mean, what was the deal behind its inception? Because I feel like I feel like coming up with something that's kind of in that medium sector is a little bit. The 30 out six can kill a lot of stuff. I mean, it can kill darn near everything it in has. North America. I think it. it I has. think it has killed. All of the things. And then you go to the dangerous game, the really big stuff, and yep. you're like you said, you got your 375 H&Hs and stuff. Why would there need to be something I'm, in the middle? It sounds like you're like, ah, I love that lot six, but I just need a little more medicine. I get, yeah. And that's and that's what it is. So larger carnivores, big cervids, pachyderms, maybe not pachyderms, um, bovine, wild bovine, big cows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, a better solution for that. I, I, don't, I don't know that I'm going to tout it as a buffalo round. For like Asiatic water buffalo or African buffalo, but it would be a better option than than a thirty out six. Certainly, probably a better option for like brown bears, big black bears, elk, mm. um, and a lot of this also comes down to like bullet technology at the time of inception. Um, so we didn't have such phenomenal projectiles then that we do now. So fast forward was some of the philosophy back then. It was like you said, we don't have we didn't have all this amazing bullet tech that we have today. Yeah. Uh, with some of the philosophy like add more lead. Yep, pretty much. Okay. Just make weight, it bigger. Weight and diameter. That that's how you got through heavy hide and heavy bone, big teeth, sharp claws. And so thirty five Whalen fills that bill. Does I, so very well. I feel like uh, it's one of those ones where it's interesting to me at least that so many people were requesting the thirty five Whalen because it's not one that you see a lot of people using. I mean, you know, I go through my, uh, obviously, the first thing I go to fact check or, or get an, a, a pulse on anything is Instagram. Um, you know, it's, it's 2021. Um, but uh, don't see many people talking about it over there. You know, not many people posting about it. I just, just got this new 35 Whalen. And, uh, and even still, just around work here and all those other places, don't really hear anybody using it, but very, why not? Very uncommon cartridge. In fact, as I'm sitting thinking about this, I think CVA might be, and, and possibly Thompson Center, might be the only people chambering a factory oh, wow. rifle in it. Like, and it's basically just a single shot. Yep. All there's right. very, very few of them out there. The last um, production run of 35 Whalens that I'm 
aware of was uh, Remington made the CDL in the 35 Whalen some years ago. Like as an addition gun, they would release a cartridge yeah. um, every so often. And, and uh, I was working behind the counter at a gun shop, and we got a bunch of those in. Like an idiot, I didn't buy one. My buddy Lance bought two, so Lance, if you're still listening, I know you still got both of those rifles, and I know you really only shoot one of them, so <laughs> let me know. Um, Lance, if you're out there. He, and he is. Uh, <clears throat> really good cartridge. Um, when I speak with folks that have Waylands, they're almost all in the Carolina, Virginia, Alabama, Arkansas, like kind of that south-southeast region. Okay. I really don't run into anybody out west that is running a Wayland because on paper they're kind of anemic. Um, you know, 250 grain projectile at like 2,600 feet per second. A lot of people will look Boy, at that. that's and, anemic nowadays? Well, yeah. It doesn't have a belt. It doesn't have a giant capacity case. Mm. Uh, but if you look at it and you really stack it up next to like a 338 Win Mag, or like I said, a, a 9.3 by 62 or, or a lot of other cartridges in that diameter weight class, it's very, very close. In fact, we've got Nosler's new reloading manual out here. We are going to look at the, uh, let's see here. Which uh, which weight Acubond? The 200 grain Acubond. Um, is that a 225 there? Uh, well? Yeah, this is this is low data for the 200 oh, okay, grain Acubond. So actually, pretty pretty darn good bullet when we look at like the BC when we think about it. I mean, it's it's a 0.365 for a hunting weight bullet. That's pretty darn good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're getting into the 27s, 28 on the high end with the XBR loading, uh, 2840. Um, when we get over to the 250, which is I mean, the, that's a big. Pill with an OKBC. Okay yeah. Going 28. Now yeah. Let's look at this 250. This, you know, yeah, more this medicine. is this is the 225 and 250 grain cha- or loadings is where I really think the cartridge kind of comes into its own because now it's really starting to pull away from something like a 30 out six. Um, the 225's max velocities are in the 27s to 28s, which, like, comparatively, a 30 out six does a 200 grain bullet around 2700 feet per second mm-hmm. at max if you're yeah. really stuffing it um the 250s right into the 25s 26s so the, super formidable cartridge like nothing to sneeze at very very powerful round um less recoil than a 338 wood mag okay N- not terribly different performance out to like 400 yards and i mean f- for the hunters in the group like 400 yards is a long ways um, if we're shooting at things. It's a poke, um, especially if you're talking about a bunch of people in the south, southeast, yeah, and yeah. midwest areas. So, like, as an, uh, a moose, elk, caribou, bear, deer, cartridge, you'll probably not find one better. Um, you know, it, it's not going to be screamer as far as trajectory is concerned, uh, but it does push a very hefty diameter and hefty weighted projectile through a lot of hide and bone um, and does so without beating the snot out of you. A lot of... Uh a lot of practicality built it. When you really think about like yep. so many hunting scenarios that you might encounter mm-hmm. in a variety of landscapes at respectable ranges where mm-hmm. you might need a little more oomph, if you will. Yep. There's a lot to this thing. I've always kind of like, I've never looked into it before this, you know, and I was doing a little reading before we jumped on here and I'm like, huh, this thing's pretty damn relevant. It is extremely relevant. Hmm. And yeah, I think the you know the really nice thing is is again if we if we're looking for a cartridge that's not far from a 338 Win Mag, which is synonymous with elk, um, it's a absolutely fine cartridge. Um, we're not seeing giant leaps and bounds in performance advantage to go to the 338 Win Mag, which is going to up our recoil, likely up our rifle weight. We're then dealing with a belted Magnum, um, which comes with its own set of debatable issues, if you will. So, Like you said, this is a necked up OT6, mm-hmm. so standard length action, you know, nothing too crazy going there. So the 338 Win Mag, um, highest velocity and most accurate load tested in the new Nosler manual. Uh, H4831, great powder. Uh, 250 grain projectile at 2780. We page over to the 35 Whalen, same projectile weight. Um, slightly larger diameter, so the BC is going to be a little bit lower, uh, but 2591, so we'll call it 2600 versus almost 2800, 200 feet per second difference out of a gun that's generating considerably less recoil. We're going from 71 and a half grains of powder down to 55 grains of powder. Hmm. There's that; Those are very compelling arguments towards a 35 Whalen. As, that is. As a, a bear, moose, elk, caribou gun. 
So is is um, I'm trying to think of a, a good way to ask this question. So hopefully it makes sense. Are you There's, seeing anybody? There. <laughs> Uh, I was going to write him a note for that with a little <laughs> circle. Uh, anyway, um, all right. So let's say there's more modern, maybe potent stuff that could be effective out to greater distances or yes. something like that, right? It's 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 just got the the nice new things about it. Whatever it's it's um grown up uh differently. I don't, what am I trying to say? It was introduced in a more modern age, so it had more modern things to go off than the 35 whale. And there's stuff out there. I don't know what it is exactly. Maybe you can name a few of them. But uh, is there is there reason to say that like something that is a bit more modern and maybe you can, it has a bit greater effective range or distance on it, you know, something like that you can, well, if it can kill it out at further distances, it can probably kill it just as well out at closer distances. Is there a reason then to say that like a, a 35 whalen, which is maybe you cap it at a shorter distance than something a little bit more modern, is still the ideal choice for those closer in distances? Mm. <laughs> like that was a very difficult thing to word. I'm sure everybody's like... If it's better farther, is it as good short? And if it's the 35 whalen's still good at decent is it better short than the one that's better further? Yeah, hmm. that's exactly yeah. what I was trying okay. to say. I'm uh, actually picking up what if, you're laying it, down let's there. Let's say, okay, let's say somebody said, I'm only ever going to shoot out to 400. Mm -hmm. Do I buy the thing that's good out to 800, pulling a number out of thin air, because I know it's going to do just fine at 400? Or do I actually go and buy something that's pretty much purpose-built to be perfect within 400, because somehow it will actually do that better than the thing... Is there any is there any truth to that, or is that just sort of? Nah? It's a lot of personal preference. Um, we live in a world, uh, especially with the American cartridge culture, where better is always like defined by more. Yeah. Um, there, efficiency aside, like I don't think a lot of folks care about efficiency these days so much as they do trajectory. Um, you know, low numbers in the drop column, high numbers in the energy column. Um, there's nothing better about a 35 whaling at 300 yards that a 338 wind mag, you know, right. would put up. I mean, the 338 out of the muzzle is faster. It's developing more energy. But with that comes a lot more recoil. Um, I think yeah. something to consider with 35 whaling specifically is ammo availability. It's a goofy cartridge. Um, in modern terms, there's not, I shouldn't say it's a goofy cartridge. Somebody out there is uh, about to wring my neck. Um you can get factory loaded ammunition for it, not anywhere near the degree of other more modern cartridges. It's less common, correct? Right. And that's that's it. If you're a hand loader, um, I would. There's zero reason you need to change from a 35 whale into a 338 wind mag or anything like it. If you draw your line at the sand at, at practical hunting distances, um, if you're the kind of shooter that wants something better further, there's better cartridges to do it. But when we sit and, and look at the 35 Whalen and what its capabilities truly are, um, and then look at, you know, what now almost a century uh, of use has been, uh, it, it's, it's certainly pulled its weight and then some. Um, if, you can, if you want a lighter rifle that recoils less, that has pretty much the same potency, uh, great choice. You're probably going to end up hand loading for it. Okay. Or having a very small amount of factory options for an even smaller subset of factory chambered rifles. Who would you go to for factory options? You know um, any of these days? So I believe Nosler does load it in their custom line. Okay. Um, Hornady may, I'd have to double check on it, Barnes may. They all make bullets for it. They all make 358 diameter rifle bullets. So there's a distinction between those and like pistol bullets because those are very different things um, with shape and, and construction. Yeah. Um, and Winchester loaded it for a long time. Remington loaded it for a long time. Um, I'm sure that it's still on the, the board. Um, 2021, ammo's kind of hard to find, though. You could always use Mark's theory where 300 Wisdom is goofy enough that you'll find it on the shelf because not everybody has it. I was at, a, at, a, at a, a big box store over the weekend. Now, I'd love to say that they had some 300 Wisdom on the shelf. I'm just going to flip-flop back and forth. At That's this all right. Time. Uh, they didn't. They had 22250, 50 BMG. Oh, gee. And maybe something. I am else guessing. The only things on the show. I'm guessing that they had 300 regular Win Mag. They did not. Really? No. Because I actually find that a lot. Oh, really? These days. Weird. You wouldn't expect it, but no. I do. Um, anyway. Hey, but, um, quick, there's... quick question. So, wait. Yes. Last year question. 
Oh, no. You, you go. It, typically, bolt-action rifles. Mm-hmm. That's what this is He's chambered for this. Yes. Yep. If, if you want to get uh, nostalgic, you know, hunting whitetail the Benoit way. Yeah, sure. You love that. In that book, they talk about the ultimate whitetail rifle, which is a Remington 760 or 7600 that's been rechambered to 35 Whalen. Ooh, wow. I can see that. Yep. I can see that. Yep, a little shorter on the barrel. And the reason is, if you got a whitetail buck that's fleeing because you bumped him, and you got to put one through the ham and make it leave the collarbone, that's a good cartridge to do it. That's one way to break them down. Low and slow. How about that? Yep, yep. Before we go, actually, everybody, we got to add in a little footnote here. We actually finished the podcast, then Ryan remembered earlier on in this episode, he said something that he was going to get back to, and we actually forgot to get back to that. So, Ryan, you said that there is a reason why sometimes, or maybe all the time, I don't know, when you go to a, you neck up, you go to a larger diameter bullet, you actually gain velocity. You can. We were, we, were, we always talk about, oh, is necking down always the answer? You just neck down, it's better. You neck down, it's better. But now we're talking about necking up, and actually... We're pushing. Anyway, you get into it. Okay. 200 grain versus 200 grain, 30 out 6 versus 35 Whalen. Yeah. So we, same nozzle reloading manual here. We went to the 200 grain, 30 caliber AccuBond or partition. Uh, and we're looking at their velocities, maxes that, that nozzle is recommending out of the load book here. Uh, 2620 is about the best you can do out of a 30 out 6 with their test barrel um, with that rig, with 200 grain AccuBond. Page over to the 35 Whalen, we find their max load at 2801. So we're, we're gaining almost 200 feet per second. And the reason that is, the 35 caliber bullet is obviously larger in diameter than the 30. So we've got more surface area on the back end of it for gas volume to push on um, instead of a very small surface. Um, so, of course, if we, if we continue on with bullet weight, that's going to drop off significantly. You know, when yeah. we get up to a 250 or something, that's just going to go the other direction. And then, of course, if we neck down the 30 odd six to say 6.5, you can get a really screaming fast thing. But we're outside of bullet weight, you know, uh, comparisons there. How much pow- What's the powder difference between the 30 odd six and the 35 wheel? And like, which one's using more powder and by how much? Um, so different powders. So there, there's kind of a, a note mm. there. So this is, but we'll, we'll get some close approximations. So they're recommending a reloader 19 load and an IMR 4895 load. So these powders, like on a granular level, are very different. Um, 58 grains on a max charge for the 35 wheel and 56 grains on a max charge, max charge for the, um, uh, Loader 19 on the 30 out six. So they're, they're actually very close. I mean, we're okay. within two grains of powder, but very different powders. Let's see if they have any similarities here. It's 4831, 48. Yeah, it's funny when you go to a, a heavyweight, larger diameter projectile, they want things changed quite a bit. So they don't have any um, powder that's same, same across the board, but very close. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking nominal difference. Mm-hmm. Interesting observation though. You've got a bullet very much that. So. Same weight, mm-hmm. but the one has a uh, it's a little bit wider at the bottom, and it's yep. going to go a little faster. Just a little less surface area to push on. And, like, this is the same kind of with about every cartridge, like 338 Federal, which is a 308 necked up to 338. Um, you know, you're seeing 180s of a larger diameter at greater velocities than you did 180s in the smaller diameter, all the way up to about a 210, and then it starts to fall off on the 338 Federal. Same thing with 338.6, same thing with 35 Whalen. Let me, so ask you, let me ask you this. I know we're making this kind of long now, but... 20-ish minute talk. 20-ish, yeah, whatever. Uh, 35 Whalen, mm-hmm. larger diameter. Mm-hmm. To get 200 grains, though, is it shorter than a 200 grain 30 cal bullet? Yeah, so your trade-off so there is... So then do you have maybe less um, BC? S- surface contact between the bullet and the barrel for like friction to build oh, up or something bearing like surface? that? Could that less bearing surface um, and that would depend. less obturation... Yes and no. I think it would depend I don't on any time you can. Now weave I'm it really in. throwing stuff. Out yeah, there. it would depend on the bullet design. Yeah. Um, but yes, I mean that certainly that's certainly a feasible argument. Um, a thing to note as well in going larger in diameter but staying the same or similar in weight, you're losing BC um, by by a fair amount. So comparably here, the BC on the 200 grain 35 caliber. AB loading is 0.365 on the um, 200 grain AB loading for the 30 caliber option, it's 0.588. So Ooh. notable gain there. One of these is going to be better for trajectory. Play with the tables though and look at it and look at how 
glaringly similar they are to practical ranges. Yeah. And then you'll notice that that 30 caliber option is going to pull ahead quite a bit um, as we as we increase distance there. Um, Sectional density is also a notable here as well. And so the, you can make an argument a couple of different ways. Is velocity everything? No. Is BC everything? No. Is SD everything? No. When you put them all together in one big pie, though, which one actually does out-penetrate and outperform the other? That'll be a little bit tricky. The um, sectional density on the 30 caliber option is 0.301, so pretty darn high. Um, on the 358 diameter for the Wayland, it's 0.223, so quite a bit lower. Mm. Um, so there will be an argument as to which one of those bullets actually will out-penetrate and outperform. Um, but you're going to get into some pretty interesting minutia there when you start picking it apart. Indeed. Yeah. Very interesting observation, nonetheless. Yeah. I'm glad we made this footnote. Yes. My, my gut tells me at these more practical distances with both, it's probably going to tip over. Yeah. All right, now we're just going to weave into the outro we originally recorded. <laughs> well, there you have it, everybody. Via your requests, the 35 will. We do know that we're getting tons of other requests out there, so keep them coming uh, and know that we will get to as many as we possibly can. Um, I know there's one gentleman out there who's really dying uh, for us to do the 762 by 25. So this is this is your hint. We will eventually get to it, we promise. <laughs> um, Stand by, comrade. That's right, that's right. All right, but uh, anyway... We'll see you on the next one. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye. See ya. Thanks, Ryan.